So the Mark II is looking quite decent. There's a couple of things I have to do. And one of them is addressing this fitment. So I'm quite pleased with how the car sits right now up front. The front view is pretty good on this car and I love it. I love the height. The height isn't ridiculously low to where it scrapes all over. I can pretty much hit any speed bump straight up and it won't scrape at all. So it's about four, five fingers up here. The fenders have been rolled by someone previously and they did a terrible job because they just took pliers it seems. Look at all those chip marks. So I'll have to work on these fenders when I get the car sprayed or when I spray it myself. Um, yeah, the rear is where we have our massive gap city. So right now, I'm just about put my foot in there, which shouldn't be the case because it's currently on 40 mil drops. So what we're going to do is we're going to install 60 mil drop coils in the rear, drop springs, and that's going to lower the car quite a bit. So 20 mil lower, we just measure this 58.5 centimeters. So lowering this should lower me two centimeters. So it should be at 56.5 centimeters. So that should look pretty good. What I'm going to do is add some camber. And that's where the controversy comes in because my brother hates camber. He's convinced that it's going to ruin the car. It's going to break stuff and it's not going to handle well. But the biggest thing with camber is you have to watch the toe on this car because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some washers because the inner stance boy is really trying to see how the car can look with some camber. <laughs> what we're going to do is add some washers, just shim it to bring out the bottom of the wheel, um, loosening the hub from the, the actual suspension arm. So yeah, that's how they do it. And if you want to add shims the proper way, it's just a larger shim with a certain thickness that's tapered to one side. So it's a whole disc that you just install underneath the hub bolts and it just pushes it out. So this is pretty safe, the bolts hold the weight in any case, in both cases with the proper shims or without the proper shims. Okay, so what tells me that this is a conversion is the fact that these two are different colors actually. The early, early Mark IIs had brake discs, but the later ones didn't. The 8 valves did not. The 16 valve Mark IIs did all the way through, but because the 16 valves came out, the 8 valve Mark IIs lost their disc brakes and converted back to drum brakes. So this is definitely a Mark III rear brake. And to loosen it, you're just going to use a 14 spanner right there up top and then a 13 mil up on the back. Now when you remove the caliper, you can't just put it on the floor because there's a line attached to it. In my case, it's a hard line. Just like that. Next thing is remove the pads. These are new pads. And now you have to remove this whole cage in order for the disc to come off. Now we should remove the rear shocks. We just put our vice grip on the top. Hold that down. Loosen this bolt right here. In my case, it's 17 mil. So when I loosen this, it's probably going to drop down on the second coilover. But right now, the second coilover, the other side should hold up the side. So it won't drop once you loosen it. So yeah, just remember the order in which it came apart. And you should be good. So now, what's holding up the lower beam is the other shock. The other side. So with this side, I'm just going to support it from the bottom.
let's jack it up and see how Taya runs into the fender. Okay, now we're going to remove the bolts that are holding in the caliper bracket, the red guy right here. There's just 17 mils on the back. Okay, so just feel out how tight your hub is because this tightness is actually determined by how tight you turn on this nut, how tight your nut is. So just feel it out so you know how it feels and you have to replace it, I mean you have to set it back to that tightness again. Nut has a crown and we have to remove the spray. Pretty, pretty suspiciously loose. Not gonna lie, that one is just slipped on me. Let me put a 14 more on there. Please don't slip on me again. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna remove this whole hub. What to the arm? To the fat suspension arm or whatever. We have Camba, baby. <laughs> So these are the shims that I put in, so it's just three washers and they are quite thick, so it is six moles in total worth of washers on the back. I put washers on the both bottom bolts, so that's nine degrees from three degrees, so six degrees of camber added with the shims. Alright, so I just have to put everything back together and then I can go have, do it on the other side and then we have some camber. The front's obviously pretty easy to adjust, all you have to do is loosen the two bolts that hold the spindle to the shocks and you have some camber. Let's drop, let's lift it. No. Sheesh! Is it touching? It's touching. Wait, let's back it up a little bit. Still has mad toe in though. We can just rock it like this for one show, man. <laughs> Give it a bit of spin. Right there. <laughs> oh goodness, that's a lot of. So previously, we were over here where Michelin. We had the Michelin showing about halfway, so now Michelin goes in all the way. And we're mad talking. Damn. Okay, so it will only hit this ride height if I hit a bump. Really hard. <laughs> I don't even know if my shock is this short. If my coil overs are this short. Mm, maybe you can fix the second one. Yeah, check it out. No, you can already.